How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? This is the night the Lord has made. Amen. And we will rejoice because we have a choice. The power to choose. Tell your neighbor you got power to choose. Don't be a bonehead. <laughs> oh, glory. Romans 12. Grab your swords. Are you willing to do whatever it takes every day? Yes. There's no victory without death. You can't start something new unless you end what's old. Amen. Too many people living in the old and trying to advance. It doesn't work. Romans 12. Is everybody there? Verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, let's speak it, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. So there's got to be a place where you reach holy and acceptable. Amen. Amen. He says, do not be conformed to this world. Conforming to this world is a representation of descending. You're headed on the way to hell. But be transformed. By what? By the renewing of your mind. To be transformed, you're headed upwards. You're ascending. Conforming is descending. Transforming is ascending. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and that acceptable and perfect will of God. Hmm. Conforming. One of the areas that the Holy Spirit has quickened me to tonight, he says, I want to bring my people to an unwavering attitude. Unwavering. Which means constant and steadfast attitude. Behind every attitude, there is a motive. And it's either honest or manipulative, which is dishonest. There's either a pure or a wicked attitude. Again, behind every attitude, there is a motive. An attitude is a reflection in a person's behavior. You've heard people say, that, well, that person's got a negative attitude or a positive attitude. Pride is an attitude. To be humble is an attitude. You can be sad or joyful. Amen? There's an attitude of bondage and there's an attitude of freedom. People try to manage their demon instead of get rid of them. In this area of attitude, God wants us to get us into a place we're, we're not, we're not only, we're not lo no longer reflecting and expressing our self-attitude, but himself attitude. Attitudes are expressed from emotions and feelings. One thing about an attitude is that it identifies a person's position and character of their outlook on things. Their view on things. Unstable attitudes are negative attitudes. They're prideful attitudes. They're fearful attitudes. Many people have an insecurity attitude. An attitude will always expose a person's identity, awareness, of course, insecurities, instability. I'll say that again. 
Attitudes will expose a person's identity. In other words, what they think of who they are. It exposes their awareness of things, whether they're aware or not, whether they're alert, whether they're sensitive to the things in the spirit, whether they're insecure or secure in Christ. It exposes their instabilities in whether they're trustworthy or not. Again, it goes back to, an, if, you're, if you're involved, you'll see a person's attitude and whether they're consistent or not. And inconsistent will always tell you there's an unwavering attitude. And where there's an unwavering attitude, there's a motive behind that. It's deceptive. Does everybody get it? 1 Peter chapter 5. God wants us to be constant and steadfast on a good attitude, a righteous attitude, a grateful attitude, a thankful attitude, expressing his character in everything we do, no matter what's going on in your life. Why? Because you don't have a life. People are still fighting for their lives. They claim to be Christians, but they haven't given their life to Christ yet. I gave my life to Christ years ago. Then why are you still fighting for your life? Still in survival mode. Not in surrender mode. Terrible attitude. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit. Everyone say submit. What's the opposite of submit? Rebel. Yeah. A lot of people walk around with a rebellious attitude. It's unpleasing to God. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be what? Clothed with humility. For God rejects the proud. That's a prideful attitude. Did you ever get around someone who knows it all and they don't know stinking nothing? Amen? But God gives grace, which is God's plan of escape, to the humble. In other words, he's going to make a way of escape for you by an attitude of humility. In other words, you know you can't do it yourself. Verse 6, he says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, that he may answer you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Submissive or rebellious attitude. Again, attitude, reflections of self or himself. Yourself or himself. Amen. And Matthew 7. Unwavering attitude. No longer tossed to and fro. Matthew 7. In verse 13. See, there's a process that God brings us through in converting of the soul and shedding of our flesh. There's an attitude he's bringing us to. It'd be nice if we could change our attitude overnight, turn on another station, you know. But there's a process of transferring. There's a process of being transformed into his image and likeness. It's not a pill you can take. There's the process. And, and the price is cooperation. If you're not willing to cooperate with his way of change, you won't. Bottom line. It's his way or the highway. 
Some people are still trying to do it their way. And their way ain't working. In verse 13, answer by what? The narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. There are many who go in by it. This is Jesus speaking. Because narrow is the gate and what? Difficult because people are not willing to pay the price of cooperation. And difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. See, you may start off good, it's but how are you going to end? You know, I, I, many people start off, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, yes, for two weeks, for three days. Some for only a few minutes. Because true reality says you're being exposed. And you, you're not saying what you really want. Does everybody understand? See, there's a lot of wannabes, but not willing to be. That's why he says many are called, but few are chosen. No one said it was going to be easy. Look at there's things that you and I have to do that we may not like to do, but we know it's best to do. Amen? Eventually, as you be continue to practice those things, what you didn't like to do, you will to do. And you will like to do them because you know the benefits of them. Because there's always a reward of good behavior. <laughs> Amen? Sometimes you get cut loose early. Hallelujah. <laughs> we won't go there tonight. Hallelujah. It says, verse 15, but beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. It says you'll know them by their what? Fruits. I want you to understand that an attitude is a fruit. You'll know them by their attitudes. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, by their attitude, you're going to know them. Amen? What does he say? Not everyone who comes to me says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Very powerful. We will know them by their fruits. Attitude is a fruit of behavior. Amen? You will know that. And I don't like when people say, well, I just got up on the wrong side of the bed. Man, you just made a choice with a devil when you got up and fell to it. There is no wrong side or right side of the bed. There's a left and right. Amen? Sometimes, I mean, but there was, I got up on the wrong side of the bed. What the heck, where'd you get that from? That's a carnal saying. You know what attitudes really are? Carnal fits. They're carnal fits. It's like a kid, baby, screaming, getting a fit to get its way. Offense, all kinds of stuff. They're carnal fits. Not counterfeits, carnal fits. John 15. On somebody you know that they're always manipulating, always trying to get you to do something or use you for something. The only time you ever hear from them is when they need something. I had a lot of carnal friends like that. They really weren't friends. They were just acquaintances. Good friends don't treat people that way. Amen. John 15 and verse 1. Jesus said, I am the what? True vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he, it may bear more fruit. In other words, that your air uh, attitude, character of Christ will begin to multiply. No matter what you're going through, you'll maintain that. 
Ellen's white, and he has a shirt that says, oh, happy day. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless what? It abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. Now, he expresses his connection. What are you connected to? Are you connected to things that are expressing a bad attitude? Amen? An ungodly attitude. An unhealthy attitude. You know, there's a place where Jesus said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. What we're supposed to have is a careless attitude. Why? As we commit it to him, we don't have any concerns. Why? Because you were bought, and you have a lifetime warranty if you know who you are. There's a little stamp on the back of your neck that says, lifetime warranty. You got a seal. The devils know it, too. It says, Jesus, Jesus' property. They know it. But if you're truly not sold out to him, that sign ain't on. It's not there. That seal is not there. See, the closer you are to him, the brighter it shines. Oh, glory. Is everybody Okay. Abide to be connected. Whatever you're connected to will express an attitude. Amen? And it will be back with a motive. Remember, every attitude has a motive behind it. You can only fake it for so long. There's a pure motive and a wicked motive. Amen? God is trying to get us to a reach in a level of an unwavering attitude of his character. In Psalm 100. The question always is, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to die to yourself? Are you willing to surrender your life? And again, not take it back. <laughs> Psalm 100, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Make it what? Joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, which means people. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Oh, happy days. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who ma has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. That's why we praise first. We're entering into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. To what? Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Again, joyful, gladness, thanksgiving. In other words, there's a Attitude of gratitude. You are grateful. No matter what you've gone through, never forget where you've been. Always remember what he's pulled you out of. Unless you haven't been willing to pay the price to get pulled out yet. Amen? Not forgetting where you came from where he, and where he's brought you to this point. And don't forget his promises. Amen. Because there's still many promises that haven't been released yet. Psalm 138. See, we're either connected to the presence of the Lord or the presence of the world. And that's where that battle is all the time. To come out from the presence of the world and get into the presence of God. And sometimes it takes a process. Not sometimes, most of the time. Until you've connected into God's presence, and now you're feeding off of his presence. You're feeding off of his word. Then it makes it easier to get in. 
because you're already connected. And then you maintain that connection. In Psalm 138, verse 4, All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lonely. But the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemy. At your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect with what concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hand. So what's he going to do? He's going to perfect what concerns you if we let him. The moment we put our hands into something, he takes his hand out. That's where we start to fall in our own strength instead of his. Amen. And Galatians chapter 2. Unwavering attitude. You ever been around somebody who's got a miserable attitude? They're always miserable. And don't point to one another. <laughs> Glory. Galatians chapter 2. Do you want to be around a person that's got a miserable attitude or negative attitude? Heck no. In fact, I want to just throw cold water on them. Get them real ticked off. <laughs> and then as they start to manifest, you cast the devil out. You know. Galatians chapter 2, verse 17. everybody there let's speak it together please but if while we seek to be justified by Christ we ourselves also are found sinners is Christ therefore a minister of sin certainly not for if I build again those things which I destroyed now listen this is powerful what God has delivered you from if you go back to that again he says that's an abomination same thing with an attitude what he's delivered you from that attitude, you go back to it, it is sinful, it is a transgression, and it's abomination to God. For what, if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? Transgressor. See, that's why it's so important that you maintain your deliverance. Because they'll come back. And they'll cause you to start building that and be old again. And then God looks at it as a transgression. Does everybody understand? Oh, hallelujah. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which... I now live in the natural realm. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. In other words, the plan of God, the plan of escape. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. But he didn't. He died to bring me and you a way of escape. And by doing that, transferring and converting our soul so that you and I would have an attitude that expresses him and no longer ourselves. Amen? Building those things, those attitudes that were destroyed <laughs> in new birth, open the doors to demonic access, causing a disconnect. Does everybody understand? They cause a disconnect in Christ. And then the influence of Christ is nullified, and now there's the influence of the demons. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1. Oh, happy days. In verse 2. James chapter 1 and verse 2. 
What does it say? My brethren, count it all joy when, when, not if, when you are challenged. When you fall into various trials. When, not if. In other words, you will be challenged. You will be tested. Knowing that the testing of your connection, your faith, produces what? Patience or endurance. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, if you're carrying a bad attitude, will you be perfect and complete, lacking nothing? No, you'll be lacking everything. <laughs> if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with what? No doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let that man not so, suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. Count it all joy from the challenges. That what's going to happen is they're going to cause a change of course. Challenges usually ch cause a change of course so that there's a releasing of something so you can get back on course on something. Amen? These challenges are not only for releasing, but what happens is you go through this course change, it's releasing a refreshed attitude. Every time you go through a, a change, every time you overcome a challenge and you cooperate with God's way, there's a refreshing of an attitude. Many people have an attitude of doubt, unbelief. They don't believe. They can't believe God can do it for them. They're always saying, show me. Show me, God. Show me who you are. Show me you could do it. He doesn't have to show me and you nothing. He paid the price. What he's saying, accept what I've done. And as you cooperate with me, I will bring things to you. Show me attitude. That's a prideful and arrogance attitude. Show me that you're God and, and then I'll trust you. It doesn't work that way. He says, if you do this, then I'll do that. Colossians chapter 1. You know, we cry out for mercy to God. Lord, mercy means consider me. Lord, have mercy upon me. Consider me. What's he going to do then? He's going to release his grace to you, a plan of escape. But he puts you in a place to learn the plan. Amen? That's why people get goofy. That's why they never have a way of escape. That's why they recycle all the time. That's why they live a life of bondage. Because they're not willing to stay long enough to learn to get out. Amen? Jesus requires everyone to learn. Colossians 1 verse 9. Is everybody there? Oh, happy days. If you're not willing to learn, what's going to happen? You're going to get cooked. You'll get burned again by the devil. You'll get burned by deception. And you can end up burning for a long time. Colossians 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. How many of y'all know we need understanding? Amen. Knowledge that is not understand is not truth. That you may walk worthy. Everyone say worthy. Of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn all over all creation. 
very powerful. Walk worthy. That means unwavering attitude. Amen? Which is determined of the level of your relationship and your love with God. Where is our relationship? You know, many people, I, I, I always look at, man, where, where was your relationship when you made that decision? Where was the Lord in this decision? He wasn't in it. That's the problem. We need to set him, keep him before us in everything. Everything we do, we have to keep an eye on him. Lord, is this approved by you? Is this disapproved by you? Is my attitude acceptable to you? We're always self-examining all the time. Why? So we live a life worthy and pleasing to him. So we're not living for us. We're living for him. Amen? In Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Unwavering attitudes. We're either expressing him or self. Psalm 15, starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill, he who what? walks uprightly, who works righteousness, and speaks the truth in his own heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes an evil person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He's unwavering. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Never be moved. All. Hmm. Attitude, remember, that reflects and expresses Christ, not self. We want to reach a level where we don't change. No matter what's going on, we don't change. Many have, many have opinion attitudes. They're always placing their opinions on something. It's because they're unstable. Is everybody okay? They're presumptuous. What, with no facts to back it? That's what you call dreamers. They re we got to reach a point where, where we possess not only the scriptures, the word of God. We want to reach a level where we possess the word of God and where the word of God possesses us. Amen? Why? Because that's how we begin to change. That's how the soul is converted. The more we possess the word, the more the word begins to possess us. The more that we possess the presence of God, the more the presence of God possesses us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You know, we always try to get, the enemy always approaches us and tries to get us to change course, change an attitude, compromise. How I many you know compromise will bring a unfruitful attitude? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. We'll speak it together. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. In other words, we desire God's presence. That's where we came from. That's why people go out and drink and party. They have no idea. They're actually looking for God's presence. They're looking to get high because they came from the Most High. It was an awesome, wonderful feeling to be in the presence of God. The problem is, is once they've been brought into this world, 
The enemy brings a false presence, but he puts it in a bottle and a needle and a joint and everything, and a pill and everything else. And people are now seeking a counterfeit. And they open the door to more counterfeit. Attitude changes, motives. They begin to live for themselves. They can't submit to the things of God. Very rebellious. And they're still conformed to the world heading toward hell. And they believe that if they become good that everything will change. No. Goodness doesn't change a person. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, the power of God changes a person. And in that power or the anointing of Christ Jesus, you begin to bear righteous fruit. Amen? Praise God. In verse 4, For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very good thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always, com always confident knowing that while we are here at home, in the body we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well, pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. Very powerful. We are swallowed up by his life, not our own anymore. 1 Corinthians 15. Unwavering attitude. Remember, behind every attitude, there is a motive. And behind every motive, there is a spirit. It's either the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of a demon. Amen. Amen. It's either going to produce an unrighteous attitude or wicked in the eyes of God or a righteous one or a pure one. In verse 33, 1 Corinthians verse, uh, 15, verse 33. What does it say? Do not be what? Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts what? Good habits. Your associations will bring impartations. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. And this I speak to you to your shame. Wow. Don't be deceived. Evil company associations bring a change of attitude to a person. That's why I don't like Fleshbrook, which is called Facebook. People love to place their opinions. Self-exaltation. What I think Facebook should be used for is business. Everybody ought to need to get their mugs off of it. Anyways, that's just my opinion. <laughs> First Corinthians 3. First Corinthians chapter three. Verse one. Hallelujah. And I got real quiet in there when I mentioned Facebook. Is everybody okay? Goodness. <laughs> False God is what it is. I'm not going to go any further with that. <laughs> it's flesh book, and that's all it's to it. It, it releases carnal fits. 
and brings false hope. Verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnalites, <laughs> as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able to. For you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not acting like are you mortal men or carnal, behaving like a what? Mere humanite. Carnalite. Carnal knight. Verse 4. For when one says, I am Paul, and another, I am Apollos, and another, are you, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but both ministers through whom you believe, as the Lord gave to each? I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So that neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. No other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is what? Christ Jesus or through the anointing. Hallelujah. Carnal attitude. We call it a vain attitude. Trying to be someone you're not is great deception. Amen? Trying to be someone that you're not is great deception. In uh, Ephesians 4. Verse 30. You know, buddy, about a selfish attitude. Thinking about themselves first all the time. Ephesians 4, verse 30. Is everybody there? And do not what? Do not what? Grieve. The Holy Spirit. Don't grieve him. By whom you were sealed for the day of what? Redemption. Let all what? Bitterness attitude. Wrathful attitude. Anger attitude. Clamor. Evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Again. These attitudes will grieve the Holy Spirit. Bitterness, anger, offense. All carnal fits. Unforgiveness. These are, again, these are all carnal fits of carnality. Which causes an individual to sow in the flesh and reap corruption. So our attitudes, which are actually fruits, if that attitude is a carnal attitude, it causes an individual to sow in the flesh and will reap corruption. Because that's what the enemy tries to do in every area, doesn't he? And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 3. It's very simple. You don't have to... One of the things that is very simple to say to an individual, did you hear what you said? Say what? Again, did you hear what you said? Let me record that for you. <laughs> Is that an attitude that's pleasing to God or displeasing to God? Am I expressing the character of Christ or myself? Amen? First John chapter 3. And are you willing to pay the price for a new life? Amen? 
verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, let's speak it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. You've got to hold on to get to that place. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him does what? Purifies himself just as he is pure. Hope to be like him. Reflect him. Express him. Purifies us. Why? Because you're now expressing his attitude in everything we do. That's where we count it all joy. It's not a self attitude. It's not a selfish attitude. It's an attitude that is pleasing to him because we are expressing how he cares. Amen? In everything we do. That's what separates us from the world. Our attitude. People know whether a person is carrying a selfish or vain attitude. You know? I'm not saying that you're going to step on that sometimes. But you need to shake it off real quick. Repent. Lord, forgive me for my attitude. Forgive me really for not surrendering. Look at even a lukewarm attitude is a bad attitude. The enemy likes to get us into a place where we're lukewarm. We're not on fire for God anymore. False contentment. False complacencies. All of these areas. He wants to get us into so we no longer maintain a thirst and hunger to grow for more. And what happens is if you're not ascending, you're starting to descend. Amen? So we must be careful in every area. We want to stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not our own and maintain an attitude, peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, which is the kingdom of God. No matter what you're going through, you have the power to choose and express what attitude. It doesn't matter what anyone's death done. You know, there's a lot of people that are still blaming other people for their attitude. Well, if what's his name wouldn't have done this, or what's his name, I wouldn't have been this way. Well, if I wasn't molested when I was a kid, I wouldn't be this way. That's baloney. It's called forgiveness. Exchange that ridiculous attitude. I wouldn't be an alcoholic or drug addict because then. You just don't know Jesus yet. You got to be willing to pay the price. Connect, follow, die, and get a new life. Did you ever hear someone say, get a life? The problem is, is most people think, well, get a life, that means I need a job. I need to have money. I need to be somebody. Wrong. You already are somebody. In the eyes of God, you're already somebody. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. But you have to prove your loyalty to him. Amen in everything we do. That's how we gain favor. He's, you're going to go through all kinds of stuff to make sure you're constantly expressing his attitude, his way, his love, and not our own. Amen? Unwavering, steadfast, and stable. Hold strong. Things are getting ready to explode here shortly. You know, the enemy's going to try and irritate you. And he irritates us all the time, you know. That's what we do with it, though. How we respond or whether we react. Things aren't going to go the way they should sometimes. You can't always get what you want. But if you die and try hard enough, you'll get what you need. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect this seed and allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory. And begin to exchange our old disgusting attitudes for your attitude. That we may be Christ-like, imitating you, reflecting you, expressing you. 
that the world may see you, not us, and bring all glory to your name, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with you.